Hello again, Peapotty Stove Ink Ink Operated with another build. And this time it's uh, another workshop stove to replace the old workshop stove. But it's not that old, I know, it's a year old. But the, the actual riser tube in the stove is two years old. Uh, it, it's The riser tube in the stove came out of the first rocket and it got put into this rocket that rocket which is still going but uh, I managed to get a new K-type thermometer for me forge outside, my gas forge and I was measuring the temperatures of this last week just to test the K-probe really and I found out that it's lost 100 degrees so I found further in and further inspection put my hand in the belly of the beast and found out that the stainless riser tube is now dying it's badly badly um, coming apart so it's, it, it's done well really two years it's been burning and it's burned a hell of a lot of uh, wood and it's heated this shop up magically and it's still going but it's probably not running as efficiently as it should be so new build right what I've got is a steel tube see there and a wooden entrance to the riser tube because yeah I'm, ga I'm going to cast the riser tube and its entrance with refractory cement and what I've got is uh, I've got a piece of six inch mild steel flue liner there and what I've done I've split it in half because there is a little seam on this where it's formed together so I've cut the seam off and I've opened it up a bit to give me a six and a half inch opening and I've just siliconed that stick onto there so that when I've done the casting I can I can whack that stick off collapse the tube and I'll be able to pull it out and the uh, the entrance as the as the uh, the kick in it the little throw to to create a vortex inside the riser tube there and what I'm made to do the casting I didn't have anything big enough you see I didn't have anything remotely near anything I could go around that with so I've kind of had to make this and I've just made it out of some bit, old bits of pieces of timber I had really and I've lined the inside with masking tape and that's going to sit over there and it should give me about an inch of casting around the riser and obviously I can take that apart really easy because it's just screwed together around the top there's only tape holding it together so when I've cast all that I should have a, a riser tube and the entrance to the riser tube I'm going to cast this tomorrow um, and I've tried to get an idea of how much casting stuff I'll need so what I did I poured that with sawdust and that's how much mix that's how much mixture I'm gonna need in that there tub. And I think that's I think that's four gallon that tub, I'm not sure, three, four gallon. But I'll mix half as much again, probably, because I'm gonna pack it down quite tight into there. Now I don't know if an inch is, is enough thickness is enough for that. It's kind of guesswork really, you can only try it. Um, I guess if it cracks and falls apart then an inch wasn't enough but we'll so I'll try show you how anyway. I do the casting tomorrow. Uh, one thing I've got to do to this is I'm going to put some second, I'm going to use secondary air in this so I'm going to make a hole there, just about there. Um, so I can put some pipe work in and introduce secondary air into the laser tube. I know some people <coughs> think it's a waste of time, but I know I know it's not, and it does give you a cleaner burn, uh, and it just helps in the way that you burn and operate the stove. It really does. So I'm sold on the idea, so I'm going to use it. Um, this is a brand new stove. I'm not going to use a bottle. I'm not going to use an old bottle for the stove body. Uh, I'm going to feed the air. Uh, into the stove directly from out the outside via some ducting uh, via a ducting pipe 
so that the stove's not sucking air out of the workshop, it's sucking air directly from the outside. Uh, I think that's the way all stoves should be vented. I really do. It's a lot safer. I've got my mould set up for the casting, and that's the refractory there, which is some stuff I've bought in, and it's. Um, uh, it's 1600 degree centigrade castable refractory. And it's kind of gritty, gritty, kind of very, very powdery. I've had this for a while now. It's been in the back room, somewhere warm. So I'm just going to cast this now and I'm going to put, I'm going to add to it some perlite. Perlite. So I'm going to add the perlite to the castable refractory just to bulk it up and to add some insulation. Uh, as I said before, the amount I'll need is somewhere about three inches from the top of that tub. So I've given I've given the tub a good measure of castable. And then probably two thirds castable and a third perlite. I'm going to mix that with water now, and uh, now I'm going to add the perlite in and just see what sort of consistency. Apparently, the consistency wants to be doesn't want to be sloppy and wet. It wants to be quite firm so it holds together. <coughs> so uh, add some water with that and give it a mix. That's the water added. I've not put a great deal of water with it. Um, it's not the water's not sort of running out of it when you squeeze it. Well, that's the sort of consistency. I think that's the consistency it's supposed to be at. Sort of wet. Uh, the perlite's dry very dry so I'm going to have to probably put some more water with it. So I've added the remaining amount of perlite I need to make up the mixture. I'll put half of that in and uh, give that a good mix. Not holding together as a as a lump, so I'd say it's probably a little bit drier. Right? Still too dry. That's it, that's better. And that'll do. Get that in there now. I've put a bag in the, over the top of the tube to stop the uh, refractory going down the riser pattern. And I put a little block there, you can probably just see it on the right hand side where the secondary air uh, uh, will go in. That little block will be replaced by a steel tube later on. 
I'm going to put that refractor in there now. Well, what I've been doing, I had to lift a little bit more, not more, it's probably about that green tub full. And what I've been doing is putting the refractory into the top like that. And getting that little stick. And I've just been ramming the stick in as hard as I can. It's probably a half inch square stick. And I've just been ramming, keep going round, ramming and ramming till I can't compact it anymore. And I'm just about there. I'm just I'm gonna have to mix a little bit more, I think, probably just a trowelful, just to finish that off. But it's, it's literally solid. And what I'm gonna do, I've been tapping the box as well. Tapping the sides of the box as I go, put a layer in. And there's a little bit of water, not much, just slightly using out the bottom, so it must be compacting. Stick won't go in anymore now, so I'm just going to mix another trowelful and that will finish it. Just about finished ramming the uh, refractory mix in. There's been a bit of a disaster on that side there, and I was I was probably ramming it too hard. Well, I was that ramming it too hard because I had the stick in, and I was hitting that with the the hammer just to tap it solid, and I've collapsed the side of the mould so I'm going to have to take that off and see what's happened and try and figure out a way of putting it back in now oh nightmare yeah that will somewhat restrict the entrance to the riser tube I think so I had to dig that out Yeah, what I'll do is I will uh, I'll just cut a block and put it in there, and I'll fix the front back on. And I'll put that stuff, put that stuff back in there. Good, good, good. I'm done. The bit that was left over, not very much. I've cast it into that little tiny tub there. So I'll, I'll set that to one side, and then I can I can just. Uh, Keep having a look at that and see how it's curing through uh, and when that's obviously hard enough as I hope it will get and I can take the uh, I can take all the mould apart and see what I've got I fixed that little bit it was doddle really just put a block in and then repacked it put the front back on I guess it's going to be probably I don't know five days a week before that's cured properly, I'm going to put it outside. Uh, I'm not going to keep it in here; it's probably too warm for it. So I'll let it cure slowly. Should should set harder then. By the way, the amount I've used, <coughs> I bought a 12 kilo, uh, sorry, 25 kilo bag of refractory mix, and that's uh, what I've got left. I've just got that much left there, so. There was enough for 25 kilos and I've probably used let's say half that bag in volume of perlite as well and water mix water wise did I use for the water yeah that little that little container I've probably used that container full of water for the whole mix if you mix this that the perlite sucks a lot of the water up because you get your refractory mix just right <coughs> you add your perlite and uh, it just so literally sucks the water out of it so you'll need to you'll need to mix a refractory 
a bit, a little bit sloppy, and then put your perlite in, and that'll take up the excess water. But that's not too wet. It's, I think that's perfect. Okay, I'll give the dimensions and amounts uh, on the end of this video as I go through it. And you'll see the start. You'll see the build. You'll see the body I'm building for it and the firebox and I'll give the plans and dimensions right at the end of the video so you can just freeze that and take the dimensions down and if you want them <laughs> that is so it's now build the stove body and build the firebox uh, and hopefully by the time that is set it should be all ready to assemble where hey right guys I'll see you see you soon